Hello everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Shuttle Mini Series. This is your host Drew Nonstar here and we're picking up right where we left off. Uh, we docked the shuttle and I had to bring the little space tug, whatever we called this thing, uh, and put it back on the space station so I could deorbit my second orbiter and hopefully not blow this one up. So we got the video running uh, at accelerated speed because we don't want to watch uh, this all in real time. Um, this is probably about hour and a half, two hours worth of gameplay in this video, and it's compressed down to about 20, 25 minutes, not quite sure yet, haven't gotten there. Uh, so here I am just dropping my peri apps over the Space Center. Um, I actually did this landing in two takes. I did a little quick save and then uh, determined that a 30 kilometer peri apps over the Space Center was not going to do it. It, uh, it, it basically put me about 25 kilometers short of the runway and I just I tried to glide in recording the whole time and that was another 45 minutes of my time just wasted so I, I reloaded um, this is me cutting to that area uh, that time rather uh, so I, I brought it up a couple kilometers I think around 33 um, yeah 33 uh, kilometer periaps and that was enough to do it uh, I did come in a little aggressively on this one I you know I, normally what I try to do is Keep you know, pitch the nose up like the shuttle would normally do. Um, unfortunately, it just it takes so long to get to the atmosphere, and I can't time accelerate with this thing. It just it's too too shaky when it's you know when I do physical time acceleration. So I just you know the whole trial and error thing. I got it where I could just point prograde, let the the computer do it for me, and just sat there. Um, still can't time accelerate because the thing will just wobble and it doesn't look good. So uh, this whole descent with the physics being as slow as they are, um, if you look at the time, the clock right now, it's yellow. I have no idea. I'm barely running any mods on this. It has to be the environmental visual enhancements or maybe it's the uh, active texture management or something. I don't know. The only mods I have on here right now are those two, uh, attack life support, Kerbal Engineer, and one more mod that I just installed. Um, which I will talk about after the landing. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, I'm still going with the whole stock parts, so so I'm not adding any new parts to the game. Uh, you know that way, if you know people want these craft files, I can actually s share them with them, and they don't have to worry about having any kind of mods installed. Well, other than um, hack life support for some of the space station for one of the space station parts. Uh, the rest of it, even on this orbiter, I don't have uh, life support containers. I just have the ship's uh, cockpits built in life support from the mod and if you take this ship and you know don't have that mod installed the craft file will still work at least I think it will who knows but here we are coming over the uh, mountain range K2 Mount K2 or whatever it's called I think that's what it's called uh, <laughs> it's coming in uh, again uh, as I mentioned we're coming straight at the prograde vector normally I don't think the shuttle would do that <laughs> I think it would burn up but yeah so I'm looking at the shuttle, and you know, I was I was really impressed with it when I first made it. And I don't know, the more I looked at it, and the more I looked at other people's shuttles, I was like, man, I could do better. So one of the uh, surprises for this episode is I have actually redesigned the orbiter. This is the last iteration of this orbiter. It will be retired after this landing, and I'm excited to show you that guys that in a second. But here we are, we're landing. Uh, it's really crazy when you speed up time like that. Um, that was physical time acceleration. It worked that time. I just had to take it off the, you know, the SAS from pointing to prograde. But when you when you speed up time with the with the clouds in Eve, it's pretty funny because the clouds go faster than you are if you're you know gliding like this. So I'm lining up uh, just like a pilot, you know, trying to aim for the numbers and flaring at the last second. Not coming in too shallow or too steep. So there they are. There are the numbers. Uh, you didn't get to see this last time, but I actually have a light embedded in the front nose uh, nose wheel. So if I do come in for a night landing, I can see stuff going on. So, yeah, and there was supposed to be, I think, three drag shoots on there, but it didn't work. I don't know. Or it came off. So this is it. This is the new mod I want to show you guys. Here we are taking off. We're going right into it. Um, I used a new mod called Curb Paint. Uh, it's pretty cool because you can actually change the color of parts. And uh, they still consider stock parts. So if I share the graph file, like I said... You can still use it, it just won't have the cool colors that I have. Um, but these are all, like I said, stock parts, which is really cool. 
So if you look at the orbiter, you can see the changes I made. I finally angled those engines. Uh, so now they are pushing outwards um, through the center of mass the best I can. And I also changed the uh, what would be the OMS engines. I, I actually changed the tank that I used. Um, I saw a bunch of orbiters that did that. It inspired me. It looked cool. It looked better than what I had. So that, uh, that also helps it look the part. So what's cool about the uh, the new redesign on this thing is I don't have to throttle that that main engine down on the on the orbiter at all. I can just leave it full throttle. I don't have to do any of that. The other thing is, that if you notice, I didn't do any kind of fuel transfer. That's because I totally redid the external fuel tank. Um, I literally sectioned every one of those tanks off uh, with the metal panels that don't have fuel crossfeed. So each one of those tanks is its own tank. Um, I have all kinds of fuel hoses going from each tank basically so they drain in the order that I want and uh, go to the orbiter. Um, this launch by the way I I still have to tweak some things I also didn't put as much there's actually empty tanks on that on the on the launch on the LFT um, when I, I didn't realize it so when I when I took off uh, which well, we'll get to that later but yeah, uh, the shallow it was a little bit of a shallow ascent and I was wondering why it was I found out later why it was it was because I didn't bring as much fuel as I was supposed to bring, um, which is ironic because at this point I'm not realizing it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I knew something was up, and I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna go with it because hey, you know, making a video and all that. So here I am, just trying to figure out, uh, you know, where I'm gonna do my maneuver and all that, where it's gonna leave me. So I think at this point I, I kind of noticed my fuel was a little low, but I was like, nah, I should be fine because you know those those tank those those engines are super efficient. They barely use any of that fuel because that, that tank is so huge compared to the, the you know what those engines are normally hooked up to. So going around, waiting to my closest approach, uh, burning you know in a direction that brings me closer to it, to the station that is. Um, unfortunately, this ended up being on the night side, so I, I actually waited till we got onto the day side. But th this is uh, where I'll, I'll, I'll cut back, <laughs> back to normal uh, normal time here. So I'm like, oh man, it's only 66 meters per second, and I definitely noticed I didn't have enough fuel, or I was really low on fuel, and I was like, I don't know, I think I can do this. So I'm burning, I'm like, all right, it's coming down, still have fuel, alrighty, all right, down to 50 meters per second, we got this. I'm gonna have just barely enough fuel to get there, and I know there's fuel on the station, so I could siphon a little off, and you know, enough to, to make a deorbit burn, so. Down to 30 meters per second, you know, 18, 17, 16, and 14, and 12, and we're getting there, man. Super close, and oh, that's 20, I'm sorry. The screen's really small. So that's 20, 20 meters per second, and uh, yeah, 19 meters per second, not going to do it. <laughs> Out of fuel. So I, I kicked over to RCS. I actually paused and, and uh, contemplated doing this all over again, reloading, um, and just ditching all that that video and, and, and re-recording and I said no nah, I don't know how many times I've you know I've been short fuel and had to go on RCS and you know I, I should be true to how people actually play the game I could have just re-recorded it and shown you a perfect launch with no mistakes but I'm a human you're a human we all make mistakes and I decided you know just to keep it salvage it so on, on, on this uh, episode, I did mess around with trying to, to use that docking port. I know I mentioned it before, how you, you know switch to another docking port on a ship like this when you have like a, a shuttle command module or, an, or another type of cockpit. And I, I, I still get that bug, man. I kept trying, you know, hoping, hoping that it would work, but nope. So in this episode, I'll be bouncing back and forth, you know, trying different instances and you'll see. I don't know what's up with that bug. It, it's annoying. I don't know if it's something I'm doing or something I can fix, but I really wish I could just use that you know, top docking port and control from there and have it be accurate. You know, I can click control from here and target a docking port and they'll be staring each other right in the face and it'll say that you're completely off on the nav ball. And vice versa, it says you're pointed right at it and you're completely off and it looks like your command modules the top of the command module is going to end up, you know, docking with whatever you're trying to dock with. Super annoying. So that's that. Nothing I can do about that. So I'm coming up. Yeah, you know, I stopped being as aggressive as I was. I'm trying to just let the sun come up. And then, oh no, problem number two: electric charges running out. 
I run the power on this thing from a fuel cell. I don't have any kind of uh, solar panels on the orbiter. So, uh-oh. Down to about 77 uh, electric charge right about now. So I figure, okay, first thing I need to do is I need to get this, this docking extension onto the shuttle. And in, in my haste, I end up docking with the wrong side of it. But we'll fix that later. No big deal. So I, I come up, I dock with it. If you look at the nav ball right now, you can see like it was completely off and I was controlling from that point, that port. Um, so yeah, so I'm coming back in. I know I'm running out of power, so I'm just trying to get myself going at the station. Um, those little tiny engines too, uh, for your, the Terrier engines I think they're called, yeah, they don't even supply power when I run them. So, well, not that I could without, you know, liquid fuel and oxidizer, but that's us. We are out of power. And I figure, okay, well, I still have RCS. I got tons of it because my payload has it as well. Um, so I say, all right, let's get the station oriented in the right way, make it easy for it. Um, actually, no, at this point, I realized I, I tried to control it, couldn't do it. Or maybe not, never mind. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't decided that yet, post commentary and all that. It's going through my mind, I have no idea. So yeah, I'm, I'm planning on, at this point, trying to still dock with just RCS, um, but due to the fact that I didn't place thrusters on the front and back on the sides, I have no translation you know, side to side with this thing. I really need my reaction wheels for that. So when, once I realize that, I say, screw it, you know, contingency plan, we will dock the station to the orbiter. So here I am, gonna go ahead and flip everything around and try to get everything lined up. And man, I'm realizing it's gonna be rough because there is only, the only uh, RCS thrusters are on that one module that I use for assembling the station. And I'm like, okay, there's, you know, there's torque at least, and there's power on here, there's there's solar panels. What I should have done probably is just dock the, uh, the tug to this, to the uh, orbiter and use its solar panels to charge the batteries up, but that would have taken time, and I was like, nah, I can do this. So coming in, it's really getting this asymmetrical thrust from, you know, this long cigar-shaped, you know, space station, basically. Um, it, it was really tough doing this. Um, I know it looks pretty easy because everything's sped up, but this took, this took a while. I think I have this sped up to, like, four times speed or maybe more no actually this is I think this is two times speed but whatever it's irrelevant it was a pain in the butt and I can't even use that docking port for whatever reason actually you know what I probably could have and I wasn't paying attention I probably should just should have oh well whatever hindsight 2020 all that stuff all that jazz anyway so almost there like I said it was super annoying Maybe it didn't look easy. <laughs> I know I said it looked easy, but it wasn't. Well, it doesn't look easy, and it wasn't. Almost there. Boom. Magnets have engaged. And it's shaking around violently, which I'm noticing more and more is happening with this station. I don't remember it ever being this shaky when I built it before. Like, right here. Boom. But usually that happens when the SAS is on and stuff is trying to like, you know, one, one thing's trying to hold its heading and the other piece is wobbling and it, you know, something like that. So usually if I take off SAS, it'll start to die down and eventually I could just time accelerate to, uh, to stop it like that. Yep. Kind of like cheating, but I don't really care. Certain cir circumstances, I won't do that. I won't stop the spin of something. I enjoy the challenge, but uh, something wobbling like that is just annoying, and I just want to stop it. So a couple cool views there. Here I am. Uh, I had actually <laughs> had action group set up this time finally for releasing the payload, and I unfortunately used the one that was mapped to the port for the uh, docking adapter. And I undocked the shuttle, but I was like, whatever. At this point, I don't even need to stay docked to the uh, station because, yeah, I'm, I already got the fuel out of it. This thing's going back. So 
I, uh, oh, so yeah, I forgot to open up this port, which I need to in order to dock with it and place it on the station. So I brought him out, and instead of putting him back on the shuttle, I figured let him hang out and, and watch, you know, just in case I need him for any other assistance, which I really knew I wasn't going to, but figured why not, why not you know? There's one more thing floating around, makes it fun. It's like space juggling. You got four things. See, so that would be five things. Five things floating around in close proximity. Trying to keep them all staying together. Not floating off into the, you know, to the Stygian void. That's, that is low carbon orbit. So, all right, so I'm gonna dock this guy. And so this piece, you're probably wondering what this piece is, right? So we brought two things up here. We brought the other, the other docking adapter. Sorry about my phone there. Um, and this thing, which is also an adapter, as you can see, that has RCS on it. This is going to be the adapter for the trusses that have all the solar panels, the uh, ridiculous amount of solar panels. Here I am uh, having a, a collision with the station a couple times because, yeah, wasn't paying attention, as you can see. Um, getting this thing ready for the docking, closing that, because you know, there's no reason for that to be open. I had left it open from the last orbiter. orbiter bleh, Orbiter, last shuttle that, that uh, disembarked the station. So remembering that I have a Kerbal floating out here, I decided to send him on a collision course with the payload bay. And I switched over and realized, man, he is booking it, but that's fine. They're resilient, they bounce. So we're gonna get this aligned and uh, come in for a dock. See him in the background. Looks like he's gonna miss. We go ahead and fix that. Yep. And get aligned. See there in the background. Oh. Touchdown. He's in the payload zone. <laughs> okay, that's ridiculous. Anyways, alright, so coming in, uh, and magnets, awesome. And we are docked. Awesome. So this is when I realized uh that I set up that docking adapter backwards so I'm gonna go ahead and inject that well undock it and it ejects which is super weird because that normally doesn't happen usually you'll undock two docking ports and it'll just sit there which is really annoying most of the time uh, but in this situation it works uh, to my advantage so I'm gonna go ahead and just chase that down um, grab that side and then I'm going to dock it back up with the space station so yeah cool so coming in doing some wild flying um, I think I might have hit the station there, or almost at the station. I don't know what I was doing. So just gonna ease in. Check out that Kerbal just chilling outside that orbiter. That's so cool. This game is beautiful sometimes. So you can see the docking silhouetted by the sun while I'm bringing him back in to the payload door area, payload bay. Uh, okay, so yeah, almost done here. Gonna dock this up and then that will be it for uh, station assembly for the day. Well, I mean, I guess besides uh, docking the shuttle back up to it, you know, details, whatever. So cool, um, this was a straightforward dock, thank god. Got some pretty crazy ones in here, like the next one. So next episode will be the last episode of the shuttle miniseries. Yeah, I have the uh, one more one more flight of the orbiter to the station. Gonna get these uh, solar trusses hooked up, open up those bad boys, and then yeah, that's it. I may or may not reserve the right to do one more episode with the shuttle. I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'll launch a cool satellite or something. Or maybe I'll come up with a cool idea to add something to the station. I don't know. It's got a little dinky fuel tank. I could put a bigger one on it. But I don't know. Yep, there you go. Time machine letting me know. I haven't backed up in a really long time. I should probably turn that off.
So let me know if you guys have any suggestions or requests. Want to see anything in particular? We got one more episode, like I said, of the shuttle mini series. Maybe two. Who knows? And then I'll probably get away from shuttles because, man, they are a pain in the ass. They are not easy. Especially when you have 90 degree, 90 degree docking ports and you can't select them because you have a command module that's a cockpit. You know, maybe I'll do an episode on just that bug. <laughs> maybe we can get that bug fixed. I don't know. That's for another episode, though. I don't know how other people do it. There's, I mean, so much time to fill. I mean, I could just be quiet here, but I feel like that would be weird. That awkward silence. See? That was weird, right? Stop talking for a couple seconds and it just like, doesn't feel right. I don't know. See, I did it again. Super weird, right? I don't know. <laughs> I give up. I've run out of things to say. Uh, gonna dock this thing, and we're gonna close out the episode. Man, I remember doing, I got frustrated with this one. I, I switched back and forth a couple times. Like I said, I was gonna do this episode, but man, that was super annoying. Like super duper annoying. I'm getting so close with this thing, and I, I do need to add maybe some more docking ports on the side of this thing. I have like one on either side. Should probably have like three on either side. The linear, uh, did I say docking ports? I meant uh, RCS thrusters. Final alignment, looking good. Looking good, is that it? I think that's it. I think that's it. Yep, magnets are working. Awesome, now things are gonna wobble like crazy because I have SAS on. Got the shuttle docked up to the station. Gonna move some crew over. Uh, so Bob and Bill, I think Bob and Bill have uh, have some company. Also going to transfer resources around just so I don't forget. Um, don't need too much on the orbiter. Uh, yeah, just enough to get away from the station. Uh, don't want all that extra weight anyways. So that's the episode. So if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next episode.